When removing the shaft assembly, make sure that whatever you're pushing it out with is small enough to fit through the hole of that connecting rod. This is a good time to inspect the cam bearing for any damage. If, if the pump had been run while leaking for long enough, the chemical can actually get in to the cam bearing and wash the grease out of it. If that cam bearing is shot, you'll need to replace the shaft and cam bearing assembly as one. Also check your main bearings and check that they don't feel lumpy and that they turn nice and smooth. From here, you can pull out that connecting rod. and inspect these flat areas for any wear that, that would be enough to feel with your thumbnail and replace as necessary. Next we can actually push out the sleeves. To do that, you'll want to have something that will fit on top of that sleeve but also be able to slip through that bore in the body. There is a special tool for that listed in the owner's manual if, if needed. Press that out and inspect the inside of this sleeve for any deep enough scratches to feel with your fingernail or any pitting. If the pump is set with chemical in it for a long period of time, you may get pitting inside of this sleeve and that will cause a leak even with a new seal. Check this o-ring, this is also in the repair kit. And make sure that this brass ring is in good condition. We'll push out the other sleeve. Inspect that sleeve for any vertical scratches or pitting and replace as necessary. Next, let's talk about the valves. If you've noticed a loss in pressure, it may be that your valves are starting to wear or if there's an obstruction in one of the valves that will also give you a loss of pressure. If you have broken valve springs, that will do it. If the poppets in here are stuck to the seats just from the chemical being pumped that'll also give you a loss of pressure. One thing you can do is blow compressed air into the inlet port and sometimes that can free up a stuck poppet. If you do need to remove the valves these are some of those special tools that we talked about listed in the owner's manual. If you don't have access to this stuff you can remove the parts with a needle nose and a screwdriver carefully you want to make note of the orientation of the valves on the inlet port. That valve will have the cage facing up. All four are the same. On the outlet port, you'll have the seat facing up. And then on the opposite end of the pump, you've got the inlet port, the cage facing up, the outlet port with the seat facing up. You want to make sure to put them back in in that orientation. To remove this valve, pull that straight out, inspect it for a broken spring or any obstructions, and then on this side, use this tool, pull that out, and inspect this valve as well. Same goes for the other side. You can pop the valve itself apart to clean out any obstructions and also to inspect the seat for any wear or pitting. Inspect the poppet as well for any wear and replace as necessary. You want to 
to check out all four of them. Okay. If the valve comes apart inside, you can take it out piece by piece. This is a good time to inspect the condition of the inside of the valve bore. You can run a wire brush through there to be able to see any chemical etching easier. Also inspect this area on, on top of this surface right here for chemical wear. If there's enough wear inside of this valve bore, the valve can actually move up and down while the pump is running which will give you erratic pressure and start to wear the body out to a point where you can't use it anymore. Now we can go over the reassembly.